Yes, sir. How are you, David boy? I'm good. How are you, James? Yeah, good. I've seen you about the last few years. You've been holding up signs. Kim Kardashian destroyed your life. Um, Mad Story, one of the biggest celebrities on the planet, if not the biggest. One of the biggest families, strongest families. I don't know too much about them, if I'm honest, but... Um, yeah, powerful family. You kind of went out against them. It's destroyed your life, and now it's you're out here trying to speak your truth from your side and trying to expose stuff where people feel as if, yeah, some people can be a perfect family, but that's not the case from your side. But first and foremost, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, do you know what, mate? I'm good. I'm flying, meeting great people, and just yeah, life couldn't be better if I'm honest. Yeah. Before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Get a bit of understanding about you, David, where you grew up, how it all began. So I'm originally actually from Connecticut. Uh, I was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, had kind of a, you know, rough, uh, didn't have too much childhood. Uh, I was actually on my own since I was a teenager. Uh, used to do a lot of skateboarding. And I ended up in, you know, California and Vegas and Florida, just kind of traveling around, skateboarding and, you know, doing whatever jobs I can. And uh, ended up meeting a girl, had kids at a young age, decided I was an entrepreneur, started my first business when I was 23 with a tax return, a few thousand dollars. Uh, I just bootstrapped it and turned that into a multi-million dollar company. And then I ended up taking some of that money after that industry kind of fizzled out. Uh, there was oil and gas stuff. It was kind of up and down. So I ended up taking some of my profits and I invested it into a phone case company. And this company, it, we had a lot of attention and we decided that we needed some kind of... Uh, technology that would actually automatically remotely monitor our comments and then maybe remove them, notify us that it's happened with keywords. So um, we just kind of, it, it morphed into technology. I was never really a tech guy, but it just turned into that. So we actually got the attention of Kim Kardashian by way of our Sensogram app, she was. We found out she was using it, and she reached out to us through one of her friends, Jonathan Chevin or Chibon, however you say his name. And she wanted to partner because she wanted to be able to, uh, you know, remove her comments. This was her thing. You know, this is what she wanted to do. She was having a lot of hate from a lot of different people at that time. On Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't remove comments at that time. Yep, that's what our Sensogram app <clears throat> did. Was it removed comments automatically? So uh, she wanted to partner, she wanted to be the face, she wanted to start a, you know, anti-cyberbullying app, uh, or anti-cyberbullying foundation, I mean, and use our app and our name, our logo as like the thing, you know. Were you a millionaire at this time? Sorry? Were you a millionaire at this time? I was. And you came from the streets with nothing? Mm hmm So see when, what age did you leave school? I did actually. I, f I ended up finishing school, but I I ended up dropping out. Yeah. Uh, and know. how was it coming from the broken home? Also, with no guidance, nobody to show you how to love. Or you know, it was tough. You know, my dad got sick. He uh, he was diagnosed with MS when he was in his thirties, and uh, you know, my mom and dad they split when I was three. So like, I didn't really have a father figure, you know, um, that could be like in my life. He ended up dying at a young age, so. I just, I had to figure a lot of things out on my own, you know, but it actually made me stronger, I think, you know, I, f I feel like it made me never back down, you know. So where did you get that entrepreneurship skills then? Was that always something that you didn't want to fail, like where you just wanted to succeed or did you have no option to succeed because you never had anything anyway? You know, it was... I didn't really understand that I had the ability at first. I worked for my uh, my wife at the time's family, um, just doing like construction work. They had a record service and stuff. So I, I was basically just working and doing whatever I could and helping them run their companies. Um, and I just 
fell into an opportunity when there was a problem with one of those companies that I was working with. They actually had an accident and they weren't quite sure that their insurance was going to handle everything. And they thought they were just, you know, done. So a buddy of mine, which was also my brother-in-law at the time, uh, we were kind of screwed. We thought we were screwed. We thought we were going to have to just go find a job, you know, uh, start something new from scratch. You know, we just had, we just both had kids, new families. So it was a really scary time. What we did was we actually went to the company that we were working for, the con like that we were contracted to. And we said, hey, we're kind of screwed. You guys like the work that we do. There's not many, you know, people that do what we were doing at the time. It was kind of a, a niche thing. So we just asked them, we said, hey, if we get the insurance, if we get everything straight that we need, could we just take over and do this with our company? Would you guarantee to use us so we don't waste our money? You know, we, we need it to make sure. They're like, yeah, do it. So we never looked back. We did everything we needed to do. We did all the legwork. And so at that moment, when I realized like, hey, I could put this together with this and that together with that, you know, make sure all the, the you know, I's are dotted and you know, T's are crossed and like everything is good. And I work for myself now. I never have to work for somebody else. You know, that was very appealing to me. Did you read any books or was it just through hard work out there and learning from the trade? I actually did. You know, uh, if I don't understand something, it drives me crazy. So, uh, you know, I, this was when the internet was just getting going, you know, so I read a lot of books, did a lot of research and, you know, took classes if I needed to. So yeah, I basically, you know, I have a self-made tattoo on my arm and I know a lot of people do this shit, but I mean, like this means something to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this really means something to me. So what was it like when you started making money, started becoming your own boss, you were married, was life going good? It was great. Yeah. Because you seem a genuine guy, you seem decent guy. There's a lot of assholes out there. Listen, everybody's out for themselves, including me. I'm out for my family. I work hard to provide for them. If people need help along the way, and I feel as if they've deserved it or they earned it, or they're good people where some people need a kickstart, or I needed it myself when I was mm -hmm. trying and raising the bar, but <clears throat> you do get people who genuinely help you, and you seem like a guy who, who's worked hard and tried to create a better life for himself. So see when everything's going good, how much did you invest into this app? Well... It was a multitude of things. It was the cases. It was it was all the businesses that tied into what we were doing at the time. We had a patent filed on our Centigram process to remove. We basically filed a provisional patent for the process of removing comments automatically from social media feeds. Like we had, like that's in the books. I have that filed before Instagram ever even added it to their settings as a filter. So that's part of why I'm so amped up and upset about all this is because I wasted so much money on the patent process, you know, our U.S. patent process that's supposed to back people up and, you know, let us as Americans, like, you know, in other countries, I'm sure, you know, their patent processes, it's like there for a reason, you know, to protect people and their ideas. And, you know, what was that patent process? It was, uh, it was the process of removing comments from, social media feed automatically any social media mm -hmm. and because i know like twitter doesn't remove its comments even to this day would it have worked on twitter it so yes we were actually we it was developing for facebook twitter youtube instagram like we were locking it down for all we actually hired the patent attorney the the firm that got the uh the mortgage process patented something to do with mortgage like they were a really badass patent firm they were going to be protecting our process so that way you know when anybody like instagram decided to add that filter if they were ever were you know which they didn't want to that's part of my story they never wanted to and then after the whole kardashian thing that's that's when they decided to do it who owned instagram at that time because zuckerberg got it now it was it was actually a private company it was uh the ceo at the time was kevin sistrom what year was this this was 2014 15. So instagram was just kind of popping off back then that yeah it was it? still it was very it was the most engaging platform at mm -hmm. the time still but it uh it was it was just popping off yeah because when did instagram come 2010 
2011? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, because Facebook was the one, but Instagram mm -hmm. with the photos and people posting just one mm -hmm. photo, it did, it started blowing up about that. I can remember it at mm -hmm. that stage. Um, so you've then come up with this idea, new app to censor comments. How much was it you put into this app and who else was your partners? I put in over a million dollars on all of it. <clears throat> You know, it was basically everything liquid that I had saved that, you know, I was able to um, between the legal and just everything, you know, the initial investments. Um, my partners, was one was my, my cousin and then another, Narayan, um, he, uh, I was the only one that invested any capital. Why? Uh, I was the only one that had it. Why bring them on board? So my cousin Dan made the connection between me and Narayan on the phone case deal. I would never would have met Narayan and he's like, Hey, let's do something together, you know, cause I was hungry looking to do something else, you know, cause that business that we had that was wildly successful, you know, we just, we had a pivot and do something else. My partner at that time, uh, which was also my brother-in-law, he just didn't do anything else. He just set on his money and just, you know, he's, he, he went with a different strategy and I'm, I've always been the business development marketing guy, like, you know, let's go guy, you know, so I had to do something else or I was going to go crazy. So I got into the phone case deal. Risk like, taker? You hmm? a risk taker? Right. I feel like I am. The older I get, <clears throat> a little more controlled risk, you know, but um, back then when I felt like I was kind of unstoppable, you know, I was this bum that, you know, was kind of skating around. I've worked since I was 15, so I didn't consider myself a bum as far as that goes, but like I didn't have any money. Um, so I just, uh, you know, kind of got to my head a little bit, I'd say, back in my late 20s and, and early 30s. Money does that. It does. But you feel untouchable <laughs> and life says, nah, yep. I'm going to humble you yeah. real quick. <laughs> That's no shit. Yeah. <laughs> no matter who you are, how good you are. No matter if you're bringing in family members or partners because they've helped you yep. connect with other partners, life is life, man. Yep. There's ups and downs. It's, it's roller coasters. Yes, it happens to everyone. But so you've invested a million. You brought people in. So you brought your cousin in because he put you on to because you did you feel as if you owed him a favor? And he had he brought skills and we all had our own skill sets. Okay. You know, he was <clears throat> But there's no risk factor for them because they're not put up, not really. put up any capital. Mm -hmm. Correct. So How's what's the process to building something like this for building an app like this? Uh, so that's where Narayan had a big part in the tech stuff. He was like the engineer, and you know, uh, you basically you have to build your user interface like the way it's all going to look. You know, so we have to like tackle that one part, and then you have to have the back end and deal with like. So he was able to do like a lot of our coding some of our coding and user interface stuff, most of the user interface in-house. So we did all that ourselves, you know, as a company, but then we had to subcontract out certain things, you know, with other people. And it's basically just, you know, project management, mm -hmm. you know? So when did this, the, the, the wheels start turning to again, pushing it to then become something? How long does it take? Quick, because we started advertising, uh, the app and its capabilities. We put it on the app store. We ended up with a few thousand users just like that. How much was it? Uh, it was free at first. Is that what normally happens with apps? Then it was. <clears throat> now there's different strategies, but we, we were in the freemium age back then to where like it was free, but then we were going to add, you know, well, but if you want to do this, it's a dollar. But if you want to do this, it's, you know, dollar ninety nine. It just, you have to do something to pay for it or, you know, advertising once you have so much, uh, you know, users and then you mm -hmm. can charge to not have the advertising. So yeah. it's just like a lot of apps now, they're free. And then after six months, they're maybe four exactly, ninety nine, yeah. And then before after a couple of years or 18 99, mm -hmm. they've listen, had to get creative. Yeah. Listen, it's business as well. A lot of the dating apps used to be free and then you're in and then you but if you want anybody to see you, you yeah, you have yeah. to pay yeah. and then more listen, it's business. I understand mm -hmm. it. But so then it starts making, well, he's making money. At any time? Uh, no, not not the app. Never, never really actually made money. Just collected users, and and then we were we were blocked essentially. So you're collecting data, like emails. You collecting mm -hmm. all that because that's important now. Mm -hmm. A day, so you're not making money. You've invested a full million into it. About 
uh, one and three quarter, I was all in. Yeah, so like a little over one mm -hmm. and a half. I don't want to say a few million, but it definitely wasn't. So when you're doing that, when how long were you expecting to then turn money back? Um, was that a three year plan, five year plan? We are were we, still we were figuring that out. Are we just becoming cocky to it that <clears throat> all other business have been successful? You thought this would be the same? So like I was actually in the process of trying to find a CEO. Like we, <clears throat> like I'm capable of putting these things together, but like I know mm. I'm not like a tech CEO. You know what I mean? Like I can get I can get to some for the development of the rest of the platforms. Um, I just got it started, but I was ready to and we were working on bringing more people in. I was going to take less percent and, you know, basically let some people buy in so we could take it to the next stage. And that's what one of the family members of the Kardashian Jenner family, uh, you know, we were basically offered a family friend was going to help fund it. So that's how they were getting part of their percentage, you know. So you've then created that you put the money in it. You've got a little team behind you. How did Kim Kardashian and Kim Kardashian find out through Instagram through Instagram mm -hmm. they had uh I think her friend Jonathan Chiba, Chiban food god he maybe told her because he was using the app somehow she found out and had him reach out to us to talk but the first time he reached out through direct messages he was like hey Kim wants control of your company it was just something from left field or just like wait like this is really awesome that this big family these super you know popular people like are even using our app and are interested in talking but like pump brakes you know let's let's like let's chill and then so he was kind of like like uh, a lot you know so we we just stopped you know we didn't go any further with with Jonathan but then there must have been some news or something like uh, her her media team released uh, that her uh Hollywood Kim Kardashian Hollywood game though the big game that she had was making like 200 million a year so a couple weeks after the first direct message from Jonathan he reached back out and said hey Kim's game is doing major money like let's talk again you know let's let's do this right so uh he set it up for her to call uh call me the next day so that's you know then she ended up calling and that's when we found out that her family, her and her family were using the app and they really wanted to get behind it. So how many followers did she have back then, 10 years ago? Uh, I think it was like less than 100 million. But Even it's, then, it's, it's still one still, post with that takes your app to be the, oh, one of the most yeah. used apps on the planet. Yeah. You're then talking hundreds of millions, potentially. People sell apps for... And yeah. websites now for, like I say, hundreds of millions, some even billions. We were reluctant, honestly, before the phone call. Before she ended up calling, we were kind of reluctant. <clears throat> not not only because of the way Jonathan came off in the beginning, but because they're, you know, what are they known for? You know what I mean? Like, we were trying to go on an anti-cyberbullying campaign and, you know, really... You know, yes, it's usable for businesses and for high-profile people to monitor and remove unwanted comments but like let's face it like we realized how big this was and how many people it could actually help in like the parental control like you know helping kids from getting bullied and like like that was something that we realized was was pretty big and we're like is kim kardashian the right person to work with on this you know we had some real conversations about this but then when she called me so to explain why I recorded the conversation, it was excitement. In no way did we ever think we were gonna have to use any convers any recordings to like defend ourselves or to like like write something. So my kids, my teenagers, they were stoked. Like like they couldn't be in the room and like talking and stuff, but they were really excited, you know. So my cousin pulled out his phone and just decided to record the conversation just like for the sake of like hearing us talk and the voices, you know what I mean? But it turned out it was, it was good. We did. What was spoke about in that conversation? Um, basically how, you know, Kim was nervous about her sisters and her, you know, and how people are online and how she wanted to um, get behind something like this for that reason and 
you know, she worries about her kids and just like, um, you know, she wants to do something great, like, you know, anti cyberbullying and start a foundation and how her whole family would get behind it. And basically she sold us on it. Any, any doubt that I had, I was like, wait a minute, this actually could work out. Like this could be really good because it could be their time to do something great and give back. And then it could be us as part of that. Like, hey, like this is what the Kardashians are known for now. Like not a sex tape, not like all this other shit. Like this is positive. Like this could be good. Let's do this together. And that's kind of. What was your gut feeling saying? I was like, let's do this shit. So you were all in, you'd feel good about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and why not? Like I say, it's one of the most powerful families on the planet. I don't know them personally. I don't really, obviously their shows through the years and they're everywhere. So they always pop up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Can you waste plastic surgery, new shows, drama somewhere. Yep. But I don't really look into it too much. I'm too busy for. They're the forced kind, on us. That kind of, yeah. They're pushed. Obviously people want to be successful and at that level. Everything's pushed in front of you so that you do know who they are. People know how the game operates now. People mm -hmm. ain't stupid. But so you've had the the nearly hour long conversation. What happens then? Um, we uh, set it up. Her, her team basically was in contact with us to uh, to go out to California to have our in person meeting and kind of nail down the percentages and that kind of stuff. See for the app, how smooth was it to use? It was actually pretty user friendly to, you know, these days it looks, you know, ancient compared to user interface, like, you know, things have changed a lot, but you, know, you could actually see screenshots of it online and how it worked. And, um, the Oklahoma city news channel, uh, <clears throat> did like a, a little piece on, on it back then with me and my cousin, and they kind of showed, so there's a video out there too. It shows, you know, how it all works. And it was, mm -hmm. it was pretty simple. And what happens then if you've got this app, say you've invested millions, you've brought big partners in, but what if these apps then decide to bring in, they can delete their own comments. How would that have worked? Would that have destroyed the app completely? Uh, no. Well, <clears throat> I think what would have ultimately happened was we would have had a, multiple different social media platforms trying to buy us and control the patent. Yeah, so someone become a popular app, they love it, and buy you out, basically. Yeah, I mean, because it would have just been, like, one of those things, like, that they would have had, you know, somebody would have had to buy it, you know, in order for it to work with everything else. Like, I could I could see, you know, Facebook, you know, Meta or whatever would have been, like, you know, because they're not only did they intend to use something like that so they can never have patent protection or whatever the legalities are on that because we had filed it already. So, like, I just think we were in a position to – and that that's <clears throat> that's why I feel like there's so much corruption involved in this situation because, like, there's so many answers that need – there's so many questions that need answered, basically. Mm -hmm. So, seeing you – what happens <clears throat> as well if – how do, do you need permission from the other apps to be deleting stuff off their app? So, you have to work with their API in order to – every uh, every one of these platforms, they have, like, a certain set of rules that you have to work within in order to, like, tap into their app and do stuff like that. So like Instagram was well aware that we were doing what we were doing, but they, um, at that time, they were against using their platform like that to, to let people censor what they choose. They did it a whole different way. That's part of what the conversation we recorded with Kardashian was she was discussing with Kevin Sistrom, the CEO at that time, like basically why they won't just do what we're doing. And they're like, well, no, we don't do it that way. We do it another way. We have, we don't, we don't believe in a one size fits all approach to removing comments. We have a whole department that basically moderates things the way that they moderate things. But that obviously changed in the couple of years after we filed our patent and Kim interfered and Kevin Sistrom is no longer the CEO of Instagram. It's now owned by Facebook and it's just a completely different animal. And some, somehow in that change up, they started using what we created and we never made a dollar off of it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have a lot of shit to figure out. Yeah, a lot. Like you say, you don't know who's in it, you don't know who's fucked Joe, but you don't know if they've seen this app become potentially one of the biggest, and they've said, okay, just sink them. You know yourself, cars can be running on water. They're not wanting that. Anybody that comes up with those ideas, I think a man actually did have a car running on water, bang, heart attack. 
They yeah. don't want everything. Energy's free. Everything's free, but yet the world is controlled. We know this. Every, people are not stupid anymore. They're not believing what Absolutely. they're seeing on the news and the newspapers. Some people are because it's all they know. They sit in front of that shit every day, but it's just, <clears throat> you open your eyes to it. Listen, it's not to be a conspiracy theory, but if you've got something there and it's worth a lot, <clears throat> you're just a, as, as sad as it is. We're nobodies. We're peasants. These people, big corporations big families who control everything they can destroy you in a fucking heartbeat if they don't rinse you dry where you've no money left they'll fucking discredit you where nobody then listens to you but like i say things are changing the tide is turning and this is what it's all about so did you ever have that one-on-one -on -one? did you ever have that meeting with kim we did and what was that like meeting her it wasn't bad um you know uh they gave us fiji water we had our you know it was me my partner ryan Dan, my wife at the time, and um, there it was Chris, Kim, one of their attorneys, and two of their assistants. And we essentially made our deal for Centigram, which was going to be 60%, uh, 40%. Um, we were going to have controlling part because it was ours, and um, they were going to get their percent for providing uh funding which chris had said they had a family friend that was going to do that then we decided uh we we had pitched the kimoji thing which M this is what everybody's <clears throat> so more obsessed about than even sensor graham kimoji was just a we were already working we had a couple other projects our our app social company which was that was the name of it it was like a an app machine we created multiple different apps and um we had a wall street emoji app and a like a sexy emoji app and my partner ryan's like well why don't we just like put these together and pitch this to her and let it be her name that way we can get this out there too so we pitched kimoji it was the ryan's one you know we came up with that like that was our trademark that we didn't trademark yet that, that's a that's a big point people are arguing about uh right now uh so Kimoji was going to be 50 50 because it was her name but it was all of our ideas and a lot of our original artwork um she was really excited about Kimoji. she was more excited about that once that came out than than anything else um and so <clears throat> we talked about trademarking that but somehow that didn't get done by us because like we so we had our attorney doing all of our legal stuff like air patents and trademarks and everything and when it came to that particular trademark, we just, since Chris was telling us they're netting contracts and they're going to, you know, everything, they're going to fast track things and we're a team, like their people are going to do stuff like on our behalf as well. So after that meeting and everything went well, we had our agreements. Kim called us to just say, hey, everything's great. You know, this this was like a week and a half later. Everything's great. We're going through with all the projects, just like we discussed. She was just kind of just checking everything off the list, like everything's good. She re-verified that her uh, her mom had secured the funding from a family friend. And then she, at that end of that conversation, she said, oh, by the way, guys, did you, did you trademark Emoji yet? Because if not, we're just going to go ahead and do that through our team and take care of all that. You know, it'll be cheaper. You know, we'll, we'll just cover it, you know. We're like, no, we actually didn't trademark that one. It's the only one we didn't do because we didn't want to do it with her name in our company name. We wanted to do it through our new entity together. We didn't think there'd be any way some random would trademark Kimoji. Nobody knew what the hell was even going on. Well, she ended up trademarking it herself without us on it. Right after she hung up that, that first phone call, and then five minutes later, she called us back and acted outraged and asked why my partner and Ryan sent a bragging text message to a friend of his that got back to Kim and she now wanted to kill the deal. Who was the friend? Uh, just, a, it was a girl that he was kind of bragging to. And there was a NDA thing to say there's no discussion At the time that? that was sent to her, no. So how can they still use that then? Because they lied to us and they made it seem like we broke some kind of eye, like we like we violated, you know, so there was fraud and lies that made us seem and their lawyers threatened us like we had like broke the law, like we had like like we were screwed.
like they basically uh, I put the letter up in my uh, my social media somewhere <clears throat> saying that they're going to basically sue me and I had everything to lose <clears throat> for $5 million if we didn't hand them over everything that they wanted essentially for her to be able to do her own comment control app if she wanted even though we had the patent and for her to have the right to Komoji or else basically I'm sued for $5 million. I lose everything because of what my partner did and come to find out it was done before the NDA was signed and it was done intentionally to interfere. And there was proof of that. So like once we found out about all this and I found out like over the next few years, I was just like seeing red. I was just in another world just with like depression and anger. Who meant to send the message, your guy or the woman? Uh, it was it was my partner sent a message to his one of his old partners, a girl that he was kind of into. Deliberately? Deliberately, <clears throat> but it was a private message saying, hey, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, but did he send it so it could go back to her? It, it was he, sent. It, basically, that's what happened was that person then used it against Narayan, sent it to Jonathan and said, hey, look, this guy's bragging about this. And then she used that against us to kill the deal and steal the IP. But what was the big deal if you were bragging about it anyway? That's what I'm thinking. You know, I don't understand what I don't. <clears throat> it was the lamest excuse to kill the deal and steal a trademark ever. You know, she could have just been like, hey, this guy's bragging. I don't really like the vibe. Let's not do this, but I want the trademark. So I'm going to give you this much money or I'm going to sue you for this. They could have did something so like it could have went so different. Why did you not start fighting then? Because I thought we were wrong. I Because Ryan wasn't forthcoming about like exactly what happened. It literally took me a while to figure out what happened. And when the guy that actually sent the message, the friend of this friend of Narayan's, mm -hmm. he reached out and was like, hey, they actually asked me to do this intentionally so that way they can mess your deal up. Like the guy has proof that he sent the message to Jonathan, that guy back to Kim. So like <clears throat> that's like... So Jonathan told him to send that text? Basically, when Jonathan caught wind of it, of that happening, he knew he can get that to Kim. Why the fuck did your guy send the text? Who is, who is he? I Trust me, dude. This, I think the same thing. Like, so I, who is he? he? He's the partner, Narayan. He was the... So Narayan's the guy who sent the text? He's a co-founder. He's the co-inventor of so Sensocram. Do you have a question that he could have been paid to send that, like a payoff? <clears throat> I don't think so because he was trying to throw everybody under the bus besides his own self. Like, but some did. Did someone outside of your group tell him to send that so it could go back to her so she could then have legal rights to take everything I don't from you? So. <clears throat> I would question that, man. You know, I, it just seems a bit extreme for someone sending a text and then and then it getting back to Kim Kardashian. It seems as if that's been set up because then they've got leverage uh, re to play with. They've got something then to play with. And then go, well, the contract's void because you've done this. Give me all this or we're going to sue you just through a text message. Somebody in your team, for me personally, looking from the outside, is involved. Whether they've been paid off and says, look, if you send that message, we'll get it back to us. We then own all rights to it because there's a deal being broken. So it just seems, listen, it's messy all angles. But so he sent a text. The text goes back to her. She made a phone call to you guys that day, but then five minutes later, started screaming and shouting. The first time she called, she already knew she was going to end the deal, but she wanted to make sure her trademark was secure first. And so the deal was 60-40 for censorship one and 50-50 for the Kimoji. Mm -hmm. How much are any of these worth now, these apps? Um, Kimoji, there's no telling. They sent me an email saying that it didn't make any money, yet Kanye West rapped about it making a million a minute. You know, they still sell stuff with the trademark on it to this day. So they're basically lying to me, saying that they didn't make any money. They also offered me six figures plus a percentage of this trademark that didn't make any money. So I'm just really confused. How much did they offer? Six figures. I don't want to give the exact amount because I don't know. I don't even know if that could get me in trouble or not. But it was a joke compared to what I had and everything. So... How long did it take for her to use that app once she hung up that phone, Kimoji? Um, 
they were already working on it uh like immediately because like you you just know like but proof wise until they launched it on the apple store like i you know i know for a fact it was like a year you know so it took them like a year maybe a little over to get it developed through the company that they wanted to get it developed through and then um and this is your idea mm-hmm so what happens after the phone call when she says the NDA has been broken? Um, she did actually didn't even say that. What she did was she was like, who's who's Narayan or who's Ryan? This was the stupidest thing because let me backtrack. In the, begin, in the beginning, when we first were emailing with them about like making arrangements to go out to California, like after the phone call, her her team and everybody was emailing each other. They're like, like I introduced – Narayan with his nickname that nobody knew other than us was Ryan. Well, let me, let me, basically they knew Ryan was his nickname before we ever even emailed anything. And the reason we know that was because when we went back through all of the documents, all of the emails, when I said, this is the Ryan, this is our create our tech partner, our creative partner. And you know, whatever I ended up saying, she replied saying, hi, Ryan, nice to meet you. And I introduced him as no Ryan. So the reason why this is important was because that text message that I was talking about, the bragging text message, that had Ryan at the top because that's what she, oh, this lady, Alice, that the one that sent the message that, that was jealous of, of our deal with Kim because she was obsessed with Kim. She had him saved as Ryan. She always called him Ryan, never called him the Ryan. So we're thinking, and our lawyer at the time was thinking the only way they know he's Ryan is because they had that text message, the screenshot before we ever even talked, before we ever went out there. So they essentially, what I feel like now and, and a majority of our legal team at the time thought was we were set up from the beginning, knowing that, because when Jonathan wanted to partner and we said no, essentially, the first time when they were being aggressive, that's when Ryan sent that message. He said, your dream girl wanted to partner with us. We said no. Then that week and a half later, we ended up talking and we ended up saying yes. So that message was before any NDA, before we ever met. She knew Ryan was no Ryan and that was his nickname and she gave herself up and we think that's why we ended up getting a settlement offer why I ended up, I ended up getting a settlement offer was because they're like okay well they kind of caught us on some shit here but then you know I basically told him F you on the small settlement offer and we filed a lawsuit did you sign anything I never signed shit did you sign anything with the apps as well to give her percentage? I never signed shit. So how can she take them then? Why did you not keep working because, on yourself? Because I didn't have the money. <clears throat> because it was because they got my partners to sign or else they were going to lose everything they had and be liable for their legal fees and everything. So because two out of three of us signed, even though I was not part of it at all, they were forcing me to go into an arbitrate a private arbitration setting and have to pay tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars just to talk to these people. So like, I, I couldn't afford that after everything. Like they knew they were wiping me out and that unless I was able to raise funds and have like, you know, a, a legal budget of hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm not gonna be able to do shit. Yeah, cause they're multi-millionaires. They're, <clears throat> they're billionaires now, but 10 years ago, <clears throat> they're multi-millionaires. So after that, what was Kim Kardashian like as a person when you met her in person? Who else did you meet that day? You know, I'm stand by, you know, she was nice. In the beginning, the phone calls, like, then in person, she she seemed fairly normal, you know. Uh, but I, I'm realizing now that was an act. Or could it have been that she is just getting told through lawyers and other people what you're doing and maybe getting brainwashed to then think you're going against her? She doesn't really know. Do you know what I mean? If she's a nice person, like like I said, I don't know her personally, but <clears throat> could she then it be, be people maybe behind her who's telling her what to do? I mean, just like I said before, she's definitely not the kingpin. 
you know, and Chris isn't even, you know, she's more so than Kim, but their legal team, like they have like the best lawyers and they're sharky. Like they know how to navigate these types of situations and to give their client a one up. Like they are well versed in this. And I mean, not for nothing, but Chris learned well from, from her ex husband or from, you know, her former husband or whatever you say, you know, he died. <laughs> uh, but so, you know, we were we were up against some really smart and shady and sharky people. Yeah. So after all that, after the phone calls, after the meetings, what happens then? You can't. You've not got the money to fight back. You've not signed anything. What happens with your life then? <laughs> I spiraled, bro. Like I, I thought that I knew what depression was before all that, but. I mean, my life just systematically just went to complete shit. Did you give up? Almost. A couple times, I really almost did. Suicide, though? Yeah, I thought about it. Yep. I mean, it, it's so hard to, like, you, you feel so alone because you hear about these people all the time, and, like, there's these major influences and these major entities out there that, like, had a had something to do with my life being shit now and you know it's like i can't i can't do anything about it you know it's it's almost like such a crazy story that some people just don't even think it's true like some people are just like oh there's no fucking way that happened you know but it's just like it's it's tough it's really tough and to not really do it and not be able to do anything about it yeah, you're going to get that speaking out against the Kardashians because they are a powerful family. They are loved as well. People genuinely do love them. A lot of people hate them now as well, especially with the Kanye West stuff and all the other shit that goes with them. But if people really know life, it's not really plastic surgery and the fake shit. That's not what I'm about. That's what nobody should be about. People have just bought into it to believe that they're not good enough, they're not worthy, they're not beautiful. Everybody's beautiful, whether that's appearance or internally everybody's got beautifulness in them and greatness and and mm -hmm. light and goodness but <clears throat> this world beats you down man mm -hmm. the prime example life is going good millionaire you're coming up with new ideas the kardashians want to get involved you're thinking you've made that and then bang life's going fucking terrible is that how your relationship and stuff broke down with your wife i mean pretty much the, it, it's when i say kim kardashian ruined my life you know people also have to understand that they triggered everything into the happening you know i obviously have been able to make choices after after everything went and you know part of it's just like i had to get attention to this you know kim kardashian room my life.com seemed like just a great way to almost use her influence against her and get attention on the story that needs to be out there so i mean did she completely ruin my life? Fuck no. But she tried. You know what I mean? And uh, until, like, I should explain why I decided to do the website real quick. Okay. I was sleeping, yeah, take your time, I was sleeping in my Prius. So you're homeless? Saving money. I was homeless by choice. You know, after I got, I moved to Arizona with my kid's mom to, you know, she had some family out there and was some better opportunities to make, you know, more money there than Oklahoma, you know. So, and plus I wanted to be a little closer to California for working on this stuff. So I was just doing DoorDash, Amazon Flex, whatever I could to make money and, you know, and rebuild, you know, waiting for, for a, a personal injury money from getting hit by a drunk driver while I was doing Uber. <laughs> so just in a shit spot, you know, just thinking, you know, like what the hell has become of my life. And I got a... a an email and a like a message through LinkedIn uh, from a filmmaker from a production company in from the UK, and uh, they were going to do a documentary on the Kardashians. They wanted to ask me about my story. I was like, "Oh, this is interesting." So I had a a meeting with the producer and assistant producer, and by the time we got done, their jaws were dropped, and they're just like, "Wow, like." this needs to be its own story. Like this needs to be its own documentary. So like based on that reaction, that triggered me to start my website. And like if I, if, if they were that blown away by this, 
maybe, you know, the rest of the world will support me and see like how fucked up this is. And, you know, so I, in my spare time, I didn't have a laptop at the time on my phone. I used just the GoDaddy free, you know, website builder. And I started typing my story out every night. It took me about a week to get it, just the basics up there. And I just put it all up. And then, you know, the rest was history as far as going viral. How long did it take? <clears throat> How many years later before you decided that you wanted to well, I f it, fight back? It, it, I mean, it was from like from that point that it happened way back in, you know, 14, 2014 through now, you know, uh, I found out more and more about the story and the, you know, the timeline and everything started, you know, showing itself more and more. And then <clears throat> in 2015, at the end of 14, whenever they launched Komoji, that was another trigger. I'm like, oh shit, they just literally launched this thing that we created for her What then we didn't make any money. Like what the fuck? So that, then uh, about six months later, Instagram released the exact filter that we had filed a patent on. And we didn't get a dime out of that. <laughs> and they, you know, I'm sitting here listening to recordings of where Kim's saying that they didn't ever want to do something like that. But then now all of a sudden they are doing that. This is blowing my mind. So that triggered me again. Then shortly after that, the guy that sent the message, the one that was responsible for sending the message to Jonathan and Kim and getting everything screwed up, came forward and told us that he did that because he was asked to do it on purpose and it was intentional. So that was another trigger. Shortly after that, we filed a lawsuit. So it's not like I never stopped fighting or never, you know, like it's just, I never thought about doing the website. You know, after the lawsuit, after the settlement offer, they tried to tell us like, hey, now you're gonna pay our legal fees. And, you know, it just, it triggered me to ultimately not care if basically any of us get sued. At first I was trying to protect my cousin and Ryan still, because like if I spoke up about it and we didn't do it together, it could potentially get them in trouble and having to pay legal fees because of the private arbitration stuff I was talking about. This is mm -hmm. so confusing. But so I just said, fuck it, I'm doing it, I don't care. And so that's that's kind of what led to the website. But I never, I never was not fighting this. Yeah, you can't, man. You've always got to fight in life, no matter what. Bend a break for fucking no one. I don't give a fuck who you are, what they're coming with you with, what they're going to try and harm you with, what they're fucking throwing everything at you. You've got to stand your ground because exactly. if you don't, they'll smell weakness. And I interview gangsters, I interview people from all around the world, killers, drug lords, bank robbers. The real gangsters are the ones sitting in fucking suits, taking advantage exactly. of the people who think they're weaker than them. <clears throat> They've seen a great idea from my own opinion, looking from the outside. Everything you could be saying is 100% legit or you could be bullshit. You could be a guy who's bitter against the Kardashians. I genuinely don't know by judging by who you are. You seem an honest, kind-hearted man. <laughs> What I see is they've got an app there, they've got another app, they've got two, they've got a great business idea, known by their name, anything they touch turns to gold, no matter what they do, they'll make money from it. But they've seen an idea where they can make money from it. And maybe not Kim Kardashian, it could be the people behind them, listen, get him away, get them away, listen, they're weak. But they've only got this amount of money, we can just suffocate them, squeeze them so much where they can't fight back. And we've, they've not got a leg to stand on. No matter if you're in the right anyway, they've still lost because of their power. So they've seen a money-making scheme. They've, all they're about is money, money and fame. I don't know, like I say, I don't know them fucking personally. They could be amazing people, I genuinely don't know. But it looks as if you've come up with a great idea. You've put your, your hard-earned fucking cash in it. You've put your life into it. Life is going good. They've seen a great opportunity. And people say, but wait a minute. Why do we need to give them 60%, 50% when we can take it all ourselves? And then that's when they squeeze. Like I say, it might not be her. It could be the people behind her yeah. pulling the strings. She's just the face of it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't make all the money. There's people around her will be getting percentages also. Instagram could be earning it. Facebook could be earning it. Yeah. Bigger names. Like I say, we're small fries. Mm -hmm. We're peasants to the people who think they're better than us. Nobody's better than anybody. Right. Everybody bleeds the same. Mm -hmm. If you want to fight, man, you've got to get the gloves on sometimes, man. Stand your fucking ground and fight back. Because then when it comes a stage, there's nothing to lose. Exactly. I'm just surprised it's 10 years now you're just going, fuck it, and going all out. It's scary as well. <clears throat> lose your kids, lose your wife, 
homeless. Mm -hmm. That's scary. But then the bitterness comes in, the envy, seeing them everywhere, traveling the world, making millions. They've stole your idea, that idea's still making money. Everybody's lying. Who do you believe? Trust issues are short to fuck. Who do you then how do you then pick up the pieces without being bitter? Because if you're on your ass, living day by day, you're doing Ubers, no disrespect to anybody who's doing Ubers, but it's a hard fucking job as well. Especially in your mind, you feel as if you should be a multi-millionaire, living comfortably, relationship strong, putting money into new ideas. How do you then when how do you then kick on from it and start then going, wait a minute? Life ain't over because you says earlier <clears throat> Kim Kardashian destroyed your life, but you did have the other choices to then make other decisions for not it to go so extreme. But listen, the power of the mind and so much pressure from outside noise, it does destroy you no matter who you are. If you're getting debt letters through every week, you think, I can't take this anymore. Do you know what I mean? So how do you then pick up the pieces to then? It's a good question. Because at first I was so obsessed with only making money to fund my fight. You know, I would tell myself like, mm, I could get into this business, I could start this business, but then I started crunching numbers and I'm like, man, but I'm only gonna be able to max out making this much money with this business in this particular situation. And that's not gonna allow me to, you know, pay my legal and so I, it got to the point where it was kind of controlling my life. You know, like things that I would do were like, but is this going to lead me to redemption and getting, you know, them held accountable for what they did and getting my money back, you know, stuff like that. So now <clears throat> I've just kind of going back to my roots and doing what makes sense. And, you know, the success, the money will follow. And I just need to, I'm balancing my, um, my fight a little, a little better. So that because I'm not going to be able to do shit if I'm not in a position to do so, you know, so back to basics, back to basics. And luckily, uh, this company, Legendary USA, they actually sent me some stuff, uh, a fellow motorcyclist. He knew that I, you know, he read my story, the owner, and he actually sent me a bunch of stuff like a care package and, uh, it's like I knew at some point somebody would see, you know, my skill set and like and see an opportunity maybe and um you know not just to help, you know, but also to create something, you know, do something else. So it's uh it's actually turned into like a a new uh you know opportunity for success for me because I get to use everything that I you know, the skills that I've acquired over all this time and, and, you know, do something that I love and something, something worthy, you know, so. When was your lowest moment with it all? It was about the time that I was sleeping in my car and right about the time that I got the phone call that kind of triggered me into making the website, honestly, the, uh, when I got reached out to by that company about the documentary. Mm. What's your whole rundown on it all? What do you think's happened and why? My assessment is, you know, Kim had the right to not want to do business with us if she knew that there was one, you know, one of us were text messaging somebody that, you know, even though it was a private message that shouldn't have even got to her attention, you know, she did have that right to not want to work with us. But when she committed fraud, lied, and the multiple other things that point to the corruption and the, <clears throat> you know, the just just being fucked up like that that's where like i know there was corruption and fraud like these these are facts so you know are they completely horrible people like i'm not gonna sit here and say that i'm not gonna sit here and say i hate them that i want them all to be canceled like their livelihoods taken none of that you know it was fucked up and i want you know if i'm wrong about anything in particular they could speak up you know let's fix this if they at one point tried to settle with me that means that it, one part of them feels like they were wrong so like let's just handle this like i don't hate you i don't you know think you guys are horrible people like i just it was a fucked up situation we may have done something wrong but you know 
the three or four wrongs that they did don't correct the wrong that we did. And that's not how you do business, you know, and, and not for nothing, but you know, we have a right to text message people, private information, you know, nothing was, that wasn't done in any malicious way. So it shouldn't have even triggered them to want to pull out in the aggressive way that they did anyways. So do you feel that was just an excuse because they had a bigger plan from it? Yeah. I mean, they, this this was Kim trying to be a tech mogul. Like there there was media out there at the time back then that she you know she was in her her new game her you know she she was trying to go the tech mogul route, and you know they really wanted the emoji thing. They really wanted emojis because it was not just them. It was like look at all their family. They all made app, these these emoji apps. You know the. The simple thing that we pitched as just an icing on the cake added app to the one we were already doing, it turned into all kinds of celebrities ended up using the same company to do all their emojis too. Like that company ended up making tens of billions of dollars on all that, on you know tens of millions on all the emoji apps for all these people. For, from your idea? Mm -hmm. So that's the painful thing. That's the stinger <clears throat> to then end up homeless, suicidal, could have possibly not been here your kid's not a father because of someone stole your idea listen if it's your idea and everything you're saying is 100 percent legit then by all means you've got a right to be fucking angry but again if oh, i hope it's not from their sake it's all greed and they're fucking destroying people's lives for their own greed for me karma will always come around but like i say it could be the other people that's pulling the strings we can get this we can fuck them off here make more money because they've got all the contacts they've got all the money what would it take like you said a couple of minutes ago, you just want to fix it. What does it take to fix what's happened? Uh, you know, if, uh, I'd love for them to admit, you know, the wrongs in it. But even if it's just I made whole from where I was before, you know, I don't need, you know, whatever my lawyers filed lawsuit loves like 300 million. When I first saw that and the news dropped on it, I was like, whoa. Who the hell sued for three hundred million? It was just the way that the lawyers wrote it up in the. It, it was. It's that's not me. I don't need three hundred million. Could the patent have been worth a billion dollars? Could I have been a billionaire if it went different? Maybe, but I don't need a billion dollars. I just want what I had before back. I don't want to have to worry, you know, in my early forties about how I'm going to retire and do it all over again. You know, that's not what I should be worrying about right now. How much does it take to then fight back? Is there still room for it to go to court and have a fight or is the case mm -hmm. done? No, there's there's quite <clears throat> a few angles, honestly. There's copyright stuff, there's trade secrets misappropriations, there's uh, you know, the trademark fraud itself. There's you know, anytime there's fraud involved in something and lies, there's really no way to like pinpoint a statute of limitations too, because like it's usually that starts when you find out of the last fraud or lie like it, it's so like there's there's definitely some things that can be done but you know i'm not even going to attempt to do anything legal unless i have the backing to do it right and i know what needs to happen to do it right now you know for sure because i've already been through this for years uh but for now the court of public opinion and me running my mouth on as many podcasts and you know getting the mainstream as much as i possibly can i'm just gonna keep fighting can it's gonna you? be as annoying and have them hate me as much as possible if can you where sees it mate i'm he might back you he might give you the money to go to court you know i wish i could say i understood him <laughs> i yeah. have no idea what's going on with him but nobody knows what's going on with anybody on no, this planet true. and you, in that life of the kardashians you don't know if that broke him as well what a talent he is. That's oh, first absolutely. album is one of the love greatest Kanye. of all time. And <clears throat> that life of fame and attention, it ain't normal. Nobody should be idolized on this he planet. He experienced the Kardashian <clears throat> curse as well. And what is the Kardashian curse? Um, there, there may be some different interpretations, but for me, it's just, you know, you, you, you get, you get roadblocked, you know, whatever, Whatever trajectory you were on for whatever success you were headed towards, if you lock into them or any kind of business deal, 
there's a highly likely chance if you're not going straight success afterwards, you're you're done. It's like every man, mostly men, I'm sure there's a lot of women too, but mostly, you know, it's it's men that are getting affected by the women in the family. Has anybody else came forward and says they've done the same to them? Oh yeah. Absolutely. I I have quite a few emails. Not only did I have to do all these case studies for our attorneys, you know, uh and dig up everything about all the times that they've screwed people over. I've, since I've gone viral over this stuff, I've had so many emails and direct messages with people, not only the Kardashians, but even other people. They're like, hey, let's put attention on this too. Let's put attention on this too. Hey, I used to work for so-and-so and they did this, or, you know, I have this, this non-disclosure agreement where, you know, they're gonna sue me or they're gonna hit me for $10,000 every time I say something bad about them and, you know, they did this. So like, there's so many people out there that are fucked up and do all these fucked up things. And then they basically just use paperwork and non-disparagement agreements and non-disclosures to, to just sweep it under the rug. How's life now? Right now? Yeah. It's getting a lot better. Why do you think it took 10 years? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, I mean, it took a lot of years to get through all the different stages, you know, with fight of the, the different fight stages, I guess. And, um, just all the support that I've had from everybody and just seeing like what I'm doing is actually getting attention to this. And I could actually build a platform out of this that can help other people and like stand up for the underdog. You know, I ultimately want some kind of foundation out of this that like helps business owners fight corruption. If you can't afford your uh, your fight and you have a clear case of like, you're getting railroaded by somebody so they can make millions of dollars off of your idea, like have some kind of a foundation that we could tap into and help people like fight. Cause like you have public defenders, you know, for people that are in criminal situations, can't afford attorneys, you have all these other situations, but if just a hardworking, you know, person is, you know, building their American dream or wherever, it, it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even have to be only America. Just our fellow Amer our fellow humans are getting screwed over. And any, anytime there's corrupt situations, usually there's the other people you're fighting have money and they can afford these lawyers and the best lawyers. Well, they're always going to lose. There's something that has to stand up for them. At some point, there has to be some group that is like, you know what? Fuck this. We're going to help these people. We're going to start standing up for these people. Did Facebook not, when Zuckerberg started Facebook, did other people not put in complaints because they says they'd help him build that and they won a big case of like 50 odd million or 100 odd million, like some serious dough. Like, is that the kind of outcome you want where? You want what's owed to you because it was your idea. Like you say, you don't want billions and hundreds of millions, but you want what you're owed. If that's made <clears throat> whatever much, and if yours have got the rights of 50% or whatever, it, it, then you deserve your right. Do you know what I mean? Like, fuck it. Fight Not that I way. don't deserve it, but <clears throat> you know, will I continue on fighting until I get hundreds of millions of dollars out of it? That's not, you know, to me, if it comes, you know, were we owed it for the for what we put in back then? You know, even my partner, you know, even my other partners, I think we all were owed something for that for sure. We have something coming, but you know, it doesn't have to be billions. What are they doing with their life now, your partners? Uh, I'm not really a hundred percent what Narayan does. We don't really talk. There's a little bit of animosity from the way everything happened. Uh, but um, I keep in touch with Dan. You know, he's just doing his thing trying to stay below the radar with all this stuff because they can't actually go after everyone for uh, legal fees. They haven't done it, but it's like a tool that they're using Kardashians. So that way, like if Dan does start speaking up and going on podcasts and stuff like me, then they could essentially follow through with his um, holding, you know, being responsible for their, legal fees and garnished wages and everything. So everybody's basically threatened to shut up. Have mm -hmm. you been discredited or anything? What sort of tools and tactics? People have tried. 
but it is what it is. Like, People could try to poke holes and whatever, but the only other person that could say what happened and why is Kim or Chris. And everything else that I'm saying that happened with Dan and Ryan, you remember those three of us in the room, plus my ex, plus all the other people, like this shit happened. I mean, it is what it is. Fact. If there's any differences in the fine details as to why things happen, if I'm wrong about something, they think I'm wrong about something, I'd love to hear it. It's just, I just can't get over how somebody can steal someone's ideas through a text message they sent to someone who was happy that they just kind of sealed a big deal. Well, if you lie about that message and make it seem like it's a lot worse than it is and it actually broke some kind of like federal like communication guideline of some mm -hmm. kind, yeah, I mean, you, you could... You could scare the shit out of somebody and make them think that they really messed up. How much would it take for you to then fight back with lawyer fees? Are you talking millions? No, I think I think a, a proper legal budget would be probably three to five hundred thousand dollars. That would be covering all of the intellectual property stuff, litigation. You know, um, could it be a lot more? And you know, yeah, but it, that would be like the you know trial of a century if there's no way they would ever let it go to trial and have a jury say whether or not i'm gonna get something out of it there's no way that jury would be like give everything to them do they hold all the cards then now though <clears throat> as a, the ball and their court they hold the money cards right now but if i did file again if i had you know somebody that's like you know what let's let's do this let's sue them how much you need and they're like basically came with me and like we could do this right like i think that would force them to have to deal with it because right now they're just going to ignore it you know they have two choices either ignore it and hope it goes away or um any attention they put on it whether they talk about it on the show whether they put you know some more legal into it and try to sue me any attention they put on it is going to be putting a megaphone on the situation and make them have to basically deal with it. So so they had offered you a deal, a settlement. When was this? This was uh, right before we filed lawsuit in 2019 and before I filed lawsuit in 2019. So they had offered you money. You re did you reject that? I did. What happens if you'd have accepted it, then that's it over? No more fighting? I would have had to sign something saying I never talk about it again. Mm. Never talk bad about them again or anything like that. What would you have been happy with? Uh, three to five million. Because that's with uh, compound interest and everything. That's what I'd be worth now if I didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So you rejected that. Then what happens? How hard was it to reject? Um, it wasn't really hard because I wasn't gonna be able to do shit with that. That was barely gonna, you know, get me out of like the legal. The the it was a joke to me. Like I had a number that had to be at least that number. Or else it was just and who offered you that that was their attorney how much was it to then put a complete like a complaint to say that you're fighting it? how much did you have to spend how much did i have to, i had to spend about as much as they offered so what happens when you reject it then the money you've put into that you lose it um so our did that, did our, that then give you some confidence that <clears throat> okay things i've got something so, here. like i had a lot of attorneys and i had like i had intellectual property attorneys one firm i had like multiple different like groups of attorneys like you get to dealing with shit like that like it's and then patent stuff and everything like you almost have to have an army of attorneys it, it sucks so bad and then you just it just never stops but the the main guy actually when he heard he was he was like a mutual uh, connection with, with uh, one of the guys that can't like was involved with sending the message to the Alice girl. So like he he actually heard about this like from the inside and reached out to us and said, "Hey, I'll be your, your litigation attorney. I'll do this on contingency. I don't need anything. I just want to be a part of the deal." And this same guy, he didn't do anything for us, like. This guy, I'm not going to call him out, but let's just say he didn't do shit 
but he also put in his bio on his website that he helped us with the Kim Kardashian case. So like he's the kind of guy that he just wants it on his he just wants the credit. He's got on his his list of on his bio all the people he's worked with, but he's never really done anything major in any of it. He's just like a celebrity chaser. Yeah, it really really kind of messed us up more, you know. If, if, so I, there's just decisions that I made, but at the same time, you still got to take risks and chances. Like, dude, like I didn't have the money. Yeah, like I like okay, either pay somebody, you know, either find funding for three, four, five hundred grand to, to do this right, or let's give this guy a shot. Yeah, you've nothing to lose. You <laughs> took a shot and it's fucking backfired. You're going to get that. That's life. You fucking had enough experience from it that it's full of ups and yeah. downs. It's makes me stronger. Let's yeah. do this shit. Like, but as long, but again, <clears throat> it made you weaker at some points as well. Where you're fucking ready to take your own lives, and that's the sad thing about it. Life does beat people down enough where they feel as if there's no way out, and no, and sometimes the only way out is I want to stop this noise up here, so I'll just end it. And it doesn't have to be that way. Everybody's got fight in them. The ones that make it through that are oh, yeah. usually the ones that kick on. Yeah, because then they know what it's like to be there. And the bottom line is, as long as you've got food in your belly, you can still give a lot more. As long as you've got air in your lungs, I'm not done yet. Money's easy to make. Yeah. Time is the time is the essence. Time is a precious thing. And you don't want to be wasting another 10 years talking the same shit. Exactly. There's got to be a time you go, well, fuck this, I'm going all out. And you know what, if it doesn't work, I'll make that money back. You've got to have that belief. You had that belief. You, you never had anything when you were a kid and made it anyway. You've still got that, mm. but you just went down that other route. That was the card you were dealt. But then it's how you play those cards now. Like I say, everything's choices. That destroyed your life, but also you destroyed your life because yeah. you could have handled things better as well. I felt bad about, you know, like feeling bad for myself and getting in that. Yeah, that, rug, that, you know, yeah, that it happens, man. That was me. I've done it for myself for years. If I'd have the mindset now, that I had in my twenties, I'd have been a multi-millionaire, but I just didn't. I wanted to drink, I wanted to take drugs, I wanted to hide, mask the pain, pretend. Do you know what I mean? So we blame everybody else. Sometimes you probably blame Kim Kardashian, but again, you made those decisions, you made those choices. You didn't have to get into bed with her and, and make all those percentages and apps and give her mm. ideas. They should have been a bit more. It'll, it'll just kick you on and learn from the next meetings you go oh, yeah. to and oh, yeah. who the fuck you're involved with. It's, <clears throat> it's all a learning curve. It's changed me as a person. Yeah. How do you then, what's the plans with it for the future? Like I say, if it goes on another 10 years, you might not have that in you. So what's the plans in the, for the future <laughs> with it all? I'm just kind of rolling with the platform that's kind of being created around me. Like um, all the support I'm getting from everybody. It's like, I feel like I'm creating value by turning that into something that can <clears throat> like not just make noise about what's going on with the Kim Kardashian thing with me, but like all the other stuff. And you know, if that turns into, you know, being like a anti-hero underdog kind of business, you know, where we tell stories, you know, that need to be told and, um, you know, like I said, start some kind of foundation that starts actually pushing back on some of the corrupt things going on. Like to me, starting some kind of business out of it and then obviously me like working and, you know, saving and doing everything that I need to do. Like that's that's where my focus is going to be and I'm not going to let the Kardashian thing like run my life, but I'm also not going to let it go entirely. You can't let it go. So it's just like you've came too far now. It's a balance for me. Yeah, you can't. Like, I don't want to be go. doing the same shit in ten years without you know any kind of punishment on their end or them having to answer for anything or even talk about it. Like there's no way that I can go ten years from now without them dealing with it. But I'll definitely not be in the same position. I'll be back where I was and then some. The next ten years, you know, so. I'm still trying to figure that out right now, to be honest with you. Yeah, but as long as you're still here, like I said, it's 10 years is a lot, and you're not just going up against <clears throat> some average Joe, you're going up against, like I've said, it's one of the biggest families on this planet. Yeah, they so control annoying. social media. One post can destroy life, and they ain't going to mention it because it then brings too much attention. That gives you something to play with. That gives you leverage to then, who is this guy? They've got too big a following if to they even mention, mention it. You. They basically give me the funding overnight. Yeah. So it's, I so, got them kind of in the chokehold right now. Yeah, so they couldn't. But 
What would it take for her to try and fix it? If she called and says, look, I was nothing to do with it, I apologise. <clears throat> would you accept an apology? Um, If the apology came with me being made whole again financially, I would, yeah, I would accept it. If it was just like a fake, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it for it to go that way. Sorry for committing fraud and lying to you. Like, that, you know, without like, making sure that I'm not struggling to make ends meet, like, you know. You nearly took your own life, brother. Yeah. I mean, it, it, everything that I put into all of the, the apps and everything that I had going on at the time, all was lost. So I had to displace that money and start selling stuff, sell my house, had to move. I still had bills to pay, like, you know, big legal be legal fees and everything to pay. But with no, you know, I basically took some of the l last little bit of money I had and started a, a, you know, food truck company, put a couple of food trucks out and tried to generate, you know, cash flow to stop the bleeding. And so, you know, it worked out, but it just wasn't enough to fight the, you know, I had success with those businesses, but it just wasn't enough to overcome the bleeding and my divorce and you know yeah and your, when was my that? kids started acting out you know they uh, had rough time it was just it was you, a mess you know when it comes to divorce the men ain't got nothing divorce is only set up for a failure for men there's no positives in divorce for no, any man on this planet that family destroyed my whole family's mental health because the excitement of going in partnership with them going out to meet them because my whole, my whole family went out there. Like they didn't all come to the meeting, but like my business partner, that the other bit, the, my brother-in-law was telling me about that. We had the business, like he was like my, you know, a, just a buddy that went with me out there to California and just like be supportive. And it's like all these people were like witnesses to this whole thing too and how it all went down. Like we were all on cloud nine, super stoked. And then everything just like, when it all went to shit, like everything, you know, my kids just didn't really understand why, you know, they thought, you know, I'm sure like, well, I'm sure my dad, he's the one that was in charge of everything. He somehow let it get messed up. And so like, I was like a hero to somehow the, you know, ass end of this complete, you know, shit storm now. And like I felt horrible about myself. I felt like my kids hated me. You know, my wife, you know, I'm not gonna say we had the most perfect marriage, but that was, like, that was it. Yeah, the icing on the cake. <laughs> you know? Because you'd have lost yourself completely, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually. <clears throat> that sort of stuff does damage people. Like I get later from, I've had man on who's we child maintenance back home when men are split up with the relationships and the women want money off them and they're just getting sent letters all the time, people are ending their life for a few thousand pound in debt because there's so much pressure. So when you get got it against, like I say, one of the biggest families on the planet, one of the biggest followings, all that money, it's going to eventually mentally break you because then you in your time, I'd imagine you're thinking, was I to blame? Was I the right? Was not the wrong? But listen to your story, you've got every right to fight back and get what you're owed. Never quit, man. Never give up. <coughs> I believe you will come out better in the long run. You've just got to stay true to you. <coughs> Don't be a dick about it. Don't be bitter about it, but still fight. But people go, do you know what? I like that guy. And then whatever, whoever controls the universe or whatever goes on, they give you a break. Then you go, do you know what? It was 10 years of pain, but I'm paying for it now. Yeah, yeah that's well said. Where do you go forward for the future, brother? What's your plans? <clears throat> just, I'm in work mode, man. Just just busting my ass, doing everything that I need to do, taking every opportunity, and just running, you know, fast as I can. No, you, no vacation for me for a long time. <laughs> do you feel as if you're coming back to your old self? I do. I do. I feel like now that I kind of have a lifeline, you know, um, it's like a, a job that like fits me. Um, doesn't even feel like I'm working, honestly. Uh, it's just, uh, things are a lot better, man. Mm -hmm. If the Kardashians are watching or they find out, what message would you have for the Kardashians if they've seen this? 
I would just ask, you know, why did it have to happen the way that it happened again? You know, uh, they know how messed up of a situation it was and it, it could have just went a much different way. So just why, <laughs> why did it's like, it was almost like a social experiment for them to watch these three partners and their families just scramble to try to figure out what the hell's going on. And it's just fucked up. So I'll just ask why. <laughs> Hopefully he's can get it resolved. Hopefully he's get the money and go, do you know what? That's it done. Hopefully it can be put to bed before it gets uglier and messier and, Hopefully. It brings all a lot of negative attention towards them because I don't feel <clears throat> they'll want that either, especially if they're in the wrong. They'll not want to be going to court cases. No. Like I said, they'll be dealing with their own shit mentally as well with that sort of life, the pressures that they're under. Nobody really knows what they're going on yeah. ever because everything you see in TV and magazines, it's all fakes. Not it's just them, but everybody. <clears throat> they'll just have their own struggles in mental health exactly. and suicidal thoughts and try to protect their kids like... No doubt they'll have their goodness in them, the same as everybody on this planet, but hopefully he can resolve it. Hopefully if things go, you know what? There's the money, take your owed and let's go on with our lives. Do you know what I mean? So family shouldn't be destroyed by lies and deceit and fucking dishonesty, yeah. but this is the way of the world, brother. Mm -hmm. It's fully out there. Everybody's <clears throat> out to fucking fuck everybody over, hate on each other, jealous of each other, envy of each other, angry at each other. It's not the way life should be. No, it's it not. should be full of fucking happiness and goodness. There's going to be obstacles, but as long as you don't don't have a break, don't have a bend, and that goes for anybody that's in a struggle right now. Don't fucking like like let life grind you down because just give it another day. Go to the next day. Exactly. And just work on yourself. Give it. Uh, okay. Do you know what? I'm going to be here tomorrow. Don't make a life decision based on what you're feeling in the heat of that moment. Yeah. That's huge because you never know how you're feeling one day to the next it could be yeah because i've had men who's been suicidal some of some mad bastards who have been suicidal and they've stuck by it they've went not done, went through with it and then before you know it for a few years later they've got the missus they've got the kids and they're loving life yeah and just with that decision at that moment it could have been different exactly yeah what's your biggest life lesson brother that you've learned so far um i mean that's one of them just what we're talking about right now, you know, depression is temporary and, um, you know, don't, don't make a decision now in the heat of a moment or, you know, while you're stressed or sad or any of these things, like give it time. Like, so that's, that's one of the biggest things that I've, uh, I've learned that and don't trust anybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't trust anybody when it comes to money. It's the root of all evil, mm -hmm. and that's that's the way it is. And money is an illusion. I always say that it doesn't really mean anything, but we give it so much meaning and power. We let it destroy us. And don't use your own money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, don't do anything. <laughs> Stay in the house. Keep yourself safe. Yeah. And just lock, don't, the, lock doors, the doors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How can people get in contact with you? People who want to support you. What's your social media? What's your website? Mm -hmm. Uh, so the website, Kim Kardashian room, my life.com, um, just any support, whether you're, you know, reading my story, sharing my, on my socials, uh, at David Liebenson on Instagram, D Liebenson on TikTok, at David Liebenson on YouTube. Um, you guys could also support me by doing any, any business with legendary USA. They're amazing. It helps me directly. Um, they're a motorcycle uh, brand motorcycle apparel leather just a solid company they actually have a, a i gotta be careful how to how i say it because the way that they do this but the um there's a a certain group of elite um people that fly jets and they have they actually we make their jackets as well so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. david would you like to finish up on anything else um that's that's really it i just appreciate you giving me a platform to tell my story and uh, I just appreciate everybody's support. Listen, thanks for coming on today. I genuinely wish you nothing but the best for the future. I believe you're a good guy. I believe big things are going to happen for you. Just stick with it, keep going. And if you ever need to speak to anybody, you know I'm there, brother. I appreciate that. God bless you, mate. You too, man. Take Thank care. you.